Hello and welcome to Dart. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to get started right away. Let's go. Dart is a project management tool with a lot of helpful AI features to help save you time. And to begin with, we're going to create a new task, which is sort of the basic building block for a lot of the common structures in Dart. To do that, let's click new task up here in the top left corner and type in something. Let's do improve social media presence for company. And after I've done that, I can fill in any of these properties, type in a description if I want, or I can let AI handle some of that for me. So I'll use AI to fill out properties, and it's going to base this off of previous tasks that I've worked on. It'll find who the most relevant person is, it'll tag it. In this case, we have the marketing tag that AI found, which is uh, pretty correct, and it's giving us a due date as well. We can also use AI to help break this up into subtasks. So if I click this here, it's gonna give us a series of steps that we can use to help accomplish this task, and we can go ahead and create it. Once we have the list of tasks, we can go in and edit them. So I can click, for example, on develop a social media strategy, open it up, and I can change things like the status. Say if I'm working on it, I can mark that as doing or maybe even done if I've completed it. I can change the assignee or any other property. And if I want, I can also use AI functions in the description by typing a forward slash and then clicking any of these options. So for example, simplifying the description, we can get a simplified version of it. Let's replace that and we can run with that. The next thing we can talk about are these buttons at the top. So we have add a subtask, add attachments. So we can attach like an image or a document to this task if we want. Or if I want to do more, I can click on these three dots over here for more options and I can find more things that I can do for this task. There's more that you can do in tasks like add comments, but for now, let's go ahead and switch to another area of Dart, which are the views. So to start with, we're in this list view where the tasks are just in a list, pretty straightforward. I can also switch that over to the board view where we can see the tasks like this in a, as cards in a board, and I can move them through their statuses just by clicking and dragging them. For example, I can mark this one as complete like so. I can even switch the view to the calendar view or a roadmap view where we can visualize when we actually want to work on the tasks. The roadmap view is also a great place to check out another one of our AI features. So to do that, let's click on Project AI in the top right and plan this project. So this will give Dart AI's recommendations on various properties. Let's take off assignees. Maybe I'm happy with what we have for that, but let's let AI start to plan the other properties. And let's click and confirm and we're going to see it sort of give us a, an idea on how we can maybe work on these um, tasks back to back. Great, so that's views. Let's go back to the list view and let's talk about some other areas of Dart. Next up, let's explain over here what's on the left side. So here we have spaces, which is basically where we have our Dart boards or our lists of tasks that our different teams can be working on. So we can always create a new one by clicking the plus here. And this is where we can choose things like the title of the space we're creating. Let's leave it as no sprints for now. And down here, we can choose specific teammates that we want to have access to the space. So I'll choose a couple like this and create it. And here we have a new space. The next thing we'll want to do is actually create a dartboard within that space. So to do that, I'll click a plus and we'll have a list here and we'll call it, let's say, my first list of tasks. And we can click on that. And then once again, we can go to create new tasks just for that workspace which only has the people that we've set to have access to it inside of it. If you want even more structure into your space, what you can do is click the three dots, configure space, and add in sprints. Basically, sprints allow your team to work on tasks on some sort of regular cadence, be it like a week or two week period, whatever that might be. And it will look like our team space up here at the top where everything that your team is actively working on goes in active, Everything that your team will be planning will go in next. And then at the end of the sprint, all what you do is click the three dots, click start next sprint, and then everything you've completed in active will move into the archive and everything that you've planned in next will automatically roll up into active. So it's a nice way to help save you time as you work on those sprints. The next thing I can mention is views at the top. So here we have the default view, which is my tasks, which basically just shows us any tasks that are assigned to us across everything else. But if I want, I can also create new views by clicking on this plus, for example, creating a title for this view, like new view, and then going into it and adding some filters. So we can filter across dartboard, for example, um, or anything else um, like status, assignee, et cetera. And we'll have this view for later. Finally, we can go to inbox on the left-hand side, which is where you can see all the notifications for the various tasks that you're involved with. Dart is also great for storing documents, not just tasks. To do that, we can go to the doc section at the bottom and we can either use the existing folders that we have or even make a new folder. We'll call this new folder. And inside of this, we can create some documents. So doc one, and I can start typing anything I want here and using, of course, the forward slash ability if I want to use AI as well. Finally, we can go to settings as well. And here we can do various things. We can configure our preferences for our workspace up at the top. We can add in new team members in the members section. 
We can change all those properties that we've been talking about, like status and assignee and other things in the properties tab. We can even make forms or change our subscription preferences or add in any integrations that we want in integrations. So there's a lot to check out here and I encourage you to take your time to go through it all. If you need more help, go to help and resources at the bottom. Check out our help center, which has a lot more helpful articles on a lot of these specific features, or you can just message us either on Discord or via email or whatever else you want and we'll get in touch and help you out right away. Thanks.